Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Raw Academics. And I am directing and doing my own webcasting today because my director had to take the night off. So, while you guys are here, I would like to introduce you to a few friends of mine. First, we have coming up a wonderful MC that I would like to introduce you all to. His name is Ryan Lucas, hailing all the way from Washington, D.C. Or is it Maryland? No, Which all the way D.C. D.C., okay. D.C. Love to Maryland. <laughs> What's up? So What's I'm glad good, you family? can come through, bro. For sure, for sure. Uh, man, appreciate you, Rob, you know, inviting Thanks. me out. Thanks. And um, I look forward to this interview, man. Thank, thank you. Like, uh, you know, I'm going to come with a heavy load of questions. Like, you it's know, it's all good. We'll get it, get it going. You know, I see you got the Instagram popping on me. Like everybody's yeah, yeah. Al already on there, like supporting you, man. Oh, shout out to all my Instagram family. And thank you for the like, the love. I see the love already, you know. Yes. I you, can't see who it is, but I appreciate you. I'll check you it out later. definitely got the love. I mean, it's, it's just popped up on my phone, too. It's just like, you know, <laughs> automatically. Are you about to go follow and look, too? I mean, no. <laughs> it, it, it popped up on my phone like, oh, you, you have a you have a um, video from Ryan Lucas. I'm like, dang. Word up. So let me go ahead and um start off with some of these questions real quick. Let me, you know, I got to do a few things with my gadgets and my devices over here. So. Because, you know, people like to call me while I'm on, on my live. And of course, <laughs> of course, all the time. Man. And it's like, wait, you you see me on my live, but you're going to call me and have a discussion with me <laughs> while my <laughs> live is going on. Well, maybe they're trying to, you know, do you, do you take uh, questions from the audience? I do, but they, they have to put it on the iPad. Oh, <laughs> can, can you I, see it from me? I, you know, right now I can't, okay. but usually my direction... Get you right, man. Cause you're looking right yes. in this shirt. Yes, I got the I got the power in one shirt. Power on. in one, yeah. Um, well, what? Let's see what it says. I love my history. I love my culture. I love my people, and I love me. That's right. That's right. We're gonna get into the shirts in a minute, Sounds but my good. first question is, how would you describe Ryan Lucas? For sure, Ryan Lucas. Is a rapper, MC, producer. I'm an ambassador. I'm a nation builder. Mm, I like and, that. And uh, yeah, all those different things, man. I, I try to incorporate all those different titles into the work that I do. Mm. Um, whether it's through, through the music, through my clothing line, through connecting, collaborating with creatives, and you know all that sort of thing. So I'm born and raised in Washington D.C., Southeast Washington D.C. Wow. Um, yeah. I'm currently out here in, in Los Angeles. I've been out here for three years. Cool, cool. And, uh, man, just making my way, you know. Uh, music is my number one love and passion, and I've made it a lifelong, you know, ambition journey. and journey. Exactly, exactly. And So uh, tell yeah. me, like, how did you begin? What what sparked the inspiration? What, what um, How did you begin in hip-hop? In hip-hop, yeah. Well, you know, uh, when I was a teenager, I think a great way for me to express myself, because I mean, I'm naturally shy <laughs> or when I was a kid. <laughs> Everybody says that, right? And they are jumping on stage. Uh, I, to express myself, I would write poetry, you know, I okay. write poetry. And then, you know, I found myself in class, you know, and I've heard other producers say this, in class when I was in school, beating the tables, you know, mm -hmm. all the time, beating the tables. There'd be a beat in my head. And, you know, sometimes they, they, they think it's something, you know, a condition or something. But right. no, I think that music is just within me, you know, and, uh, ever since I started producing, that mm. beat doesn't like terrorize me in my head anymore. I can put it down and you know. Make well, it like that's an interesting question because I, I mean, well, interesting statement because I've heard um, Timberland said say the same thing okay, at, the, see. at the ASCAP Expo. Um, okay, because okay. And, and that's where I met you at. Exactly, um, exactly. Um, so three years ago, right? Right, exactly. right there before I moved here. Right, exactly. So w when I never like see when I hear music in my head, like I hear like. You know, usually I'm writing, you know, like I write all the time, write about everything. And then when I like read the sentence back, I'm like, oh, that has a nice little flow to it. Definitely, so like, definitely, so, definitely. So I like, you know, reserve that line for a song maybe. But, you know, I never had the whole beatboxing thing. Like, and I know like um, most teachers usually say like, oh, the, the kid has like an attention disorder. Yeah, right, or, right. Like, so like. I mean, have you received that and like, or have you seen people 
get treated like that because of like mm -hmm. they just hear things like and what do you have to say about that i haven't received the label mm -hmm. um part of the reason is because i did grow up in a in a home there my, my parents are really strict on you know mm -hmm. making sure i'm respectful and that's sort what of but it, it was in me you know it right. was in containing me uh growing up you know in, in school um in dc yeah, definitely, you know, I think that kids are, you know, say overdiagnosed or misdiagnosed mm -hmm. with certain things. And, you know, right. there's a whole, you know, there's a whole lot of stuff that goes on with the medicines that they're given. Um, when you label mm -hmm. a child and in, that's in development right. incorrectly, that that can affect them as adults. You know, that right. affects how they what they think they can do, you know, who they are and mm -hmm. um, what they think of themselves. So, you know, um that's something that um i mean it's a definite issue a definite issue right. yeah i saw it though i saw it with my classmates i, I did see that and some of them have gone to do great things creatively <laughs> creatively I think without without any medicines listen, or any I see extra discipline now, exactly i don't have children but i see kids now when i'm around them and i mm. see them jumping around the walls or doing i think that's just normal right. you know when you as adults sometimes we lose that we, we lose that like kid like you know perspective like right, right. they're exploring I have, I have two nieces and i see them exploring mm. and they're jumping around and they're figuring things out and they're learning all of this is learning and and you know exploring and experimenting this is that's the purest form of like being a human like the purest form of of creativity right. is the the idea of, of no fear right. no fear no right. you know and unfortunately what happens we're taught to um to to lose that or we're taught to you know, to not let that express or, or, or grow, you know, let it come out. Yeah, right. not let it grow. And you, right. you never know what can happen with it. But mm. I can go on for days for that. <laughs> <with> that. <laughs> what is your overall vision in hip hop? Like, what do you like? You know, I know you're a nation building. So like, um, but what is the details of you building your nation? Definitely, definitely. It comes out in different forms. And I'm holding this uh, CD now. It's called Liberate Through Economics. I put this out in last November. Mm -hmm. And basically, this is a, a, a number of tracks um, that I have dedicated towards my solution to fight the injustices that we've been dealing with and facing with, not only in this country, but in the world. Ooh. The idea that... Um, we need to think independently right. and think of ways to creatively co connect, which is, a, these are ideas and concepts we all know about, mm -hmm. but these are practical ways. And I do believe that economics, the way that we handle our money, the way that we deal with our money, the mm -hmm. way that we, you know, whatever we use it for, mm -hmm. affects how we're treated. It affects how much power we have, right. you know? And not just money, it's resources, really. Managing your resources, which is bigger than money, right. you know? Because the people that, that own oil who own transportation who own you know these these corporations those are the ones that have the power right you know and it, it's the idea that we start on our level you and i mm -hmm. can start on, on a basic level you mm -hmm. have a service i need something i go to you for it first if right. you can't do it i find somebody else in the family if we can't do it then we go somewhere else for it hmm. it's basic it doesn't right, have right. to mean like everything needs to start <laughs> today we need everything needs to be black <laughs> old today it means like yo there are people that do at this point every sneaker head Mm -hmm. Should have if you're sneakerhead, you should have a, a shoe that's designed or created by a black-owned company. That's right. simple. You right. start there because once you invest in a black-owned item service, you're helping you know that black-owned you know get company to get level. to the next level. Right. Exactly. Um. So connecting it back to the music, that's what this music about is about. It's really about us uh, using our talents mm -hmm. and our gifts to advance. Right. Advance our advance people um, and nation. When I say nation, it, it, it's it's just within us that we can control what we can control, you know, and us controlling that. Because I think there are a lot of things that we don't think about that we can affect. Right. We can affect because we think I'm just one person. I only have one vote. But, yo, it's a ripple. You know, you start the wave and you keep it going. Right. I may not be able to save the whole world. But right. my music, you hear something of one lyric of one song <laughs> <laughs> can affect you to change your mind about something, right. can, ha can empower you to do some great things. Right. Was that your that, question? Was that's that? that's <laughs> deeper than the question. <laughs> but that's, that's what this is about. That's right. what Liberate Through Economics is about. You can find it on my website, real website, ryanlucasdc.com. And uh, follow me also on at Ryan Lucas DC on all the social media website on social media sites to uh, to, to check out the project. Woo, you can't pre you can't even prepare. Like, <laughs> man, I'm telling you, bro. I, you know, I'm very proud of this project. I'm gonna have a number of projects. I, I'm proud of all of my music. Uh, right. By the way, I, I don't. There's I can perform any of my music anywhere, and I'm happy about it. And I'm proud of it. And it, you know, I stand on what what I say. You right. know, 
Um, let's let's go back to the beginning and okay. let's, let's try and like um, associate that. Um, okay. Let's associate your your mission to. Yes. Um, do would you say like growing up in a DC area um, that has affected you in your your journey um, or what you're trying to do in your journey mm -hmm. um, with music? Would you say growing up in your neighborhood affected that? My most important or most influential um, people or you know things in my life are my parents. Mm -hmm. My parents were great. They, 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 mm -hmm. they, I was raised in love. I was raised with everything I needed. Mm -hmm. So I, I believe that in any environment that you're in, I, I, I'm a product of D.C. public schools. Mm -hmm. You know, Any environment that you're in, if you have parents that care and love for you and you have a community of parents that care and love, you'll find thriving children, a, a thriving generation. Gotcha. Um, so I attribute all of that, all, all that I am, into my parents. You know, they, they gotcha. raised us. Um, I did grow up in a conservative Christian home, though. Mm -hmm. And um, so there were things, a lot of things we could do, couldn't, things we couldn't do. But they showed us love. They taught me to think. They, told, they taught me to, I can do really what I want to do in life. They right. both came from impoverished situations mm -hmm. and advanced and, you know, got graduate degrees and, you know, became leaders of their community. Wonderful. My father was a pastor of a church. My right. mother was a guidance counselor at a um uh, at a at a uh, elementary school, right? Uh, you know, a lot of people looked up to them. You know, and I'm really proud. You know, I'm proud of you know to be their child. You know, right. they 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 raised us. I have uh, three uh, two brothers and a sister, and raised mm -hmm. us. And that's where that's where my what I say comes from. Right. Musically, I don't know because my parents are both. You know, my father. I think he managed a band. He said he managed a band in high, in college or something like that. Right. But both of my parents were not into music. My you know we my my I have aunts and uncles and cousins that play music, you know, obviously in church and that sort of thing. Right. But, um, but yeah, so they, they um, I just, and myself, because even with my siblings, they're not really into music. Mm. For something within myself, I decided that I wanted to continue with. Me and my brother, back in the day, used to freestyle in the basement, you know, influenced <laughs> by hip-hop music. When we got to, when, you know, in, in uh, high school, middle school, we were freestyling in the basement. I just decided to take it further, you know, keep right. going with it. You know, I didn't really get serious about it uh, until about maybe seven, eight years ago, mm. honestly, though. But, um, oh, wow. you yeah, know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm 37, so right. I didn't really get serious about it for about 10 years. Um, when I say serious, I mean, like, I'm moving to LA, you know what I'm saying? I'm pursuing this, this is becoming a business. Right. And you know, and I tell people all the time, like, yo, whatever you wanna do, do it. Cause right. at the end of the day, every every decision that you make, every life changing decision is gonna be difficult and hard, no matter what stage you are in your life. Got you, you got know, you. Um, and so what, what inspired you to move from because it seems like you have a lot of love for DC. Love, I, look, it's <laughs> tattooed tattoo on, on your tattoo arm. on my arm. <laughs> but but what, what made you move to LA? What happened was, as I said, you know, 10 years, five, six years ago, you know, I was really serious about the music and craft and trying to figure out ways to uh, have great new experiences, adventure with mm -hmm. the music, travel. And as I traveled around the country doing shows, going to conferences, you know, I met some amazing people out here, a, a big collection of creatives that were serious, also serious about mm -hmm. their music. Mm -hmm. And um, you can find that in every city, yes you can. Right. But I've, I came out here and I really- It's uh, like infectious out here. Man, <laughs> I, met, I met some individuals from different parts of the country. Right. They were all moving there for the same reason, but they were, you know, were had they made a decision that this is what they were going to do and right. they were passionate about it and I felt like the community that that I, that I met out here um, would be supportive of me growing and exploring this was all an exploration you know mm -hmm. sort of thing um, I, I I didn't know what would happen or what to as, as you know hey. as anybody that moves to a new city in New York LA wherever you decide to move or right. stay even in your own city you don't know what's going to happen I just decided I just decided that I wanted to do something greater I wanted to do more with the music I had a band in DC which I still rock with mm -hmm. I have uh, collaborators I still collaborate with a lot of people from DC right. um, but I've been able to perform so many places out here so many you know different places I've right. been able to connect and build and grow it's been you know because of you know the the landscape because of the Hollywood thing because right. of the labels because of the, all the actors and actresses and comics and musicians there's a lot of stuff to do a right. lot of stuff to grow from right. and uh, so this, this is the reason why I moved you know I moved out here um, still connect heavily with DC I actually will be performing out in DC um, next month 
Um, and I do it, you know, as often as, as possible. Cool, cool. Man, that's <laughs> you got an infectious personality, bro. Oh, thanks, man. No, nah, man, it's just like uh, I'm ready like to like, all right, you guys gotta get out of here. I, I, I need to work on my work music. Craft, work. Listen, man, <laughs> listen, this is all about what you wanna do. It's like, right. you know, you have to make a this I made a decision in my life, mm. you know, in two thousand and ten. Two thousand ten I made a decision that I was gonna right. do what I needed to do to get to where I needed to go to. And right. where I where I where I'm going, I don't know. All I know is I wanna make great music right. and I wanna share the music. Whatever medium, you know, I'm music videos, uh whether it's through I have I wrote a um a book of mm. my lyrics, a poetry book. Uh, whether it's through, I'm thinking about like movie, a movie, or doing something like that. Um, through my performing, <laughs> through my performing, through um, the band, you right. know, the musicians I work with, right. all those, and my clothing line. You know, these are all ways that I express myself. You know, right. foundationally, music is 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 my love, but all these ways are help to to feed the music. Now, let me ask you this. Um, now. You're operating just as yourself. You're not operating operating as a label. You're not. You're not. Are, like, what is the goal in, in mind in terms of that as the business aspect? Like, are you are you um trying to become a label? Are mm -hmm. you are you um trying to sign to a label? Like, mm -hmm. what is that goal looking For like? From my understanding, what I'm doing is is almost like a label. You right. know, I have my own. I do my own distribution right. when it comes to digital or you know the printed copies or that right. sort of thing. I do my own uh, promotion. Mm -hmm. I do my own booking I do everything on my own uh, I do collaborate with people that can help mm -hmm. or I can help them mm -hmm. I do my own photography I have you know we've done videos I've done my own videos sometimes I'll set them up in my apartment and and shoot a video edit it myself everything so everything that a label would do I do mm -hmm. now if there are, are individuals or entities that can assist me in becoming greater or mm -hmm. reaching a greater market I am down to work with so uh, people do ask me all the time you know especially when I go back it's like oh do you want to get signed do you want to get signed I'm I'm open to all opportunities that will right. help to build and grow the music that makes sense business wise. You know, right. you know, if, if, if I if I get into a situation where I am um, assigning, um, you know, rights to, to things and it's mm -hmm. not helping me right. to grow or advance or not helping me to put money in my pocket, there's no reason to do it. Right. right. If there are things that will help do that, I am down for any opp any opportunity, any way that it looks um, to be a part of now. You know, there's a lot when it comes to to um, signing or you know, a label and that sort of thing. There's a lot that comes with it. So, you know, you have to. There's so much you have to. You have to be able to um, reach by yourself, or at least with within your own, reach a certain audience. Or right. certain, you know, because mm. it's all about dollars. It's all mm. about dollars. It's all about what you can return back to, to individuals. So that's mm. what I work on. I work just on me and how I can grow myself and grow the people that I'm around. I was just telling you before that if I have an opportunity that I see that I can't help me, or even if it does help me, and if I know people that are that have a similar you know path, mm -hmm. I send it right to them. They don't have to ask me. People don't, that are in my circle, in my, on my team, when I say team, that means like the world that I've worked with, mm -hmm. and it's something I can offer an opportunity, I automatically send it to them. Like today I sent something to some, to some guys because, you know, I'm all about us making moving. decisions, moving together. Right. So I am a one man label, but mm -hmm. also um, I'm down and open to working with other people. Now, what would you? Um, oh, it's cool. <laughs> it's cool. Um, what would you say, like, um, as far as like, how would you describe your music to other other people? Okay. Hmm. It's a good question because you know, <laughs> as a creative, I don't like to box myself in. Right. right. But no, no, that's what people say. I think now, right mm. now, I can just talk about right now. Right now, it's about inspiring. It's about empowering. It's about taking my stories and the stories of other people that I know and um, helping people to move to do something, you know, mm. um, in a positive way, you know. My clothing line is called Power in One. It's mm. about having the power within yourself to affect change, mm. you know. So that's what the music is really, really about. It's about, so it comes out in different ways, though. It comes out in reflection of, of things that have happened that are maybe made mistakes on or mm. things that I've made right decisions on, things that happened that I can't control. And I'm like, wow, I'm surprised that this happened and I'm so mm. happy or proud. So proud about them. <laughs> we got some, uh, got some visitors. Studio, studio audience. Got some visitors. Oh, no. Yeah, we can. Oh, no. That's okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> studio audience. Yes. Uh, so, so uh, the music. Yes. That's what it's about. You know, I, I grew up listening to um, uh, 70s, 60s, Motown, soul music, but also the classic hip hop music. Mm -hmm. um, and so some of my 
people that I, you know, uh, look up to, mm -hmm. like your black stars, your roots, the com common, uh, those type of individuals. So um, I really am into music that helps to build and grow your consciousness or helps to make you like think about something. But also it's about having fun as well. You know, right. we are entertainers at the end of the day. Right. You know, if, if you can't entertain someone, then they may not listen to you, you know. So it's about the balance of entertaining and um, and educating, you know. Right. So. So that's what it is. It's, it's, so yeah. you said that you have some performances coming up. Definitely. <laughs> well, um, first, I want to ask you, you performed in the UK. So yes. how yes. was that experience like? Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> um, um, basically, uh, I had an opportunity to to go out there um, for a number of reasons. And mm -hmm. one of them was the primary reason was to perform um, at a, at a pl place out there. And uh, there I've, I've heard that. UK when it comes to my music when mm. they the sound the sound they really respect mm. the hip hop you know uh, right indie the original yeah, yeah the, the, you know they respect the, the right. all right when I went out there perform the music you know like my song yo 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 those type of songs mm. man they loved it they loved it they really <laughs> enjoyed they really enjoyed it and so man that was a beautiful experience I met a lot of people that wanted to connect that I mm. still connect with now um, supporters and also artists other artists that uh, we collaborate with right. I'm even my uh, the uh, one of the guys that does my engineering is from the UK so you know wow. I was able to connect and build with him so how does that work like um, you guys just send like the the waves like back and forth yeah i record the waves here mm. and then i'll just you know internet man like i tell you you know because of the internet because right. of the, we can just you can do everything you know right. you can do everything so yeah i send him the waves so send them back and you know um he actually re re remixed one of my projects as well he's a producer right. so he remixed one of the projects as well <laughs> so yeah man you got a, a you got a, you got a large network brother it's a it's a beautiful thing that's the way to get it man that's right. the way to get it is just everybody connecting because Business is business. You still want to handle the business. Mm. But um, at the end of the day, the business is not when I'm on my last leg and I decide, like, you know, looking over my life. My life is going to be, I'm going to look over and say, what, you know, how much, of the, how much beautiful music have I created? How much, uh, you know, how many connections have I created? Who, is I, who have I helped to, to ed, get to where they want to get to, you know? Right, right, um, right. All with just me writing some words and reciting them over lyric, over beats, I'm sorry, over right. beats. You know, that is really what it's about, so. So UK was amazing. I definitely want to go back. I'm actually looking to go to um, some other places. I really want to go to South Africa. Um, looking at Brazil. These are some of the countries I'm looking for. Maybe, maybe this year. Maybe not. Maybe next year. What about um? What are the places that you're performing at next month? Yes. Coming okay. Up? So I'm releasing a new project. It's mm -hmm. called uh, Trap Call Fresh, and mm -hmm. basically it's a collaborate collaborative project with a number of artists that I've worked with, established artists of artists that I've worked with. Uh, over um, the past couple of years, mm. and we put I put the music together, and um, I'm releasing it no, uh, July 11th, mm. and I'm starting that tour for it, um, East Coast tour, um, July 16th. July 16th, I'll be at the Songbird, Songbird uh, D in DC, Washington DC, uh, for the first show. Because I always make sure before I, when I put a project out, I always do DC first, you know, because that's the love, <laughs> that's the home. No matter what I'm doing, I give it to DC. Get that good motivation. Exactly, start. and I got the people excited. I'm excited to come. We did a we had a wonderful show in November. We we packed out a spot and had a great time. So we're doing the same thing with my band, the DC Gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Also DJ Corey T, my DJ in, in DC, and also um, Latasia, who's an artist who you know who um, supports my, um, um, with singing. She supports me at all my shows in right. in the DC area. So that's J July 16th. For that show, just uh, found out about another show I'm gonna have on July 17th, which is in uh, Jersey City, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. spot called JC Underground. Right. JC Underground. That's 8 p.m. on on uh, July 17th. Um, we're we're looking to book a a place uh, July 19th in Durham. We got a couple two different clubs we're looking to, to do. Um, so we'll have that information ASAP. I'm telling my my Durham, Raleigh, Charlotte people. And then the final show on the East Coast will be in Charlotte. That's July 22nd. That'll be the same week, July 22nd. And this will be at the Black Market Charlotte, Black Market Charlotte, which is an art studio that my clothing line, Power in One Clothing, is uh, putting together an Afro Cool Fest. Afro Cool Fest. Wow. And um, I will be one of the featured artists on the Afro Cool Fest. We also are going to have this amazing chef. Mm -hmm. We have some of other amazing artists. We have a live painter. You know, we're going to just do a bunch of different things, but also we'll be able to share um, my music and um, 
releasing the project, really what this is about, the celebration of this new music that I'm doing, um, which will all be on my website, ryanlucasdc.com. Also, we're going to be working on a shirt, which will be released around the same time, a Fresh Tribe shirt to complement the album. So you'll right. get a package deal, the shirt, the album, you know, uh, bracelet, you know, all these things together. Just so you can know, look fresh, feel fresh, and listen, <laughs> to, some, listen to some fresh music. So, like, um, now, now going into the clothing line real quick. Yeah. Um, so where did you get the idea for the clothing line, and like, what are some of the materials that c are coming along with it? All right, so my clothing line is called Power in One. Mm -hmm. um, like I said before, uh, you have the power within yourself to affect change, and we do it through fashion. Mm -hmm. uh, created the line in 2011 with two of my uh, partners, business partners, a two-year Cornwell out of, right now he's out of, um, Silver Spring, Maryland, and Carrick Faulkner, who's out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, mm -hmm. We all went to college together. And uh, we pretty much came together. We wanted to start a business some years ago and decided, you know, we're all uh, men about elevating mm -hmm. people. So how can we elevate, you know, we all into, like, you know, nice clothing and, and putting it together. At first, we were going to maybe have a boutique where we resold other clothing we like. But then, right. you know, we got to a place where we were like, um, Man, we can create our own. You know, we can create our own brand and start on our own designs. Mm. From then, we've done a number of different. We started with T-shirts. You know, we've done button downs. We got snapbacks, uh, bracelets. Um, bracelet line actually um, put these together myself. You know, the Woo! bracelets. <laughs> um, um, we have um, sweatpants. We've done dresses. We mm. have. Um, we we want to fully clothe. You know, right. Um, our customers. So that's really what it's about, and also connecting and partnering with other organizations that are doing the same thing. You know, that are, are building and growing. We have brand ambassadors um, mm -hmm. that we work with, and we've had some um, some traction on some you know some of the TV shows and that sort of thing. So you know, it's been growing, it's been building and working. Uh, uh, you can find Power in One Clothing at pioclothing.com, um, where you find our full line. It's a it's an online clothing P -I boutique. Clothing. P I O P I O Power P in One. Okay. Clothing.com. Also, you can follow us on, on all social media sites at Power in One. Okay. You know, spelled as is Power in One. And you know, build with us, grow with us, connect. We you know, you respond to us, we respond back, and you know, we're just about us partnering, and we're actually you know looking to really like connect with other organizations now, that are doing you this. by yourself power in one or no. is this um with um several people there's two there's well there are officially three managing partners okay i mean i, I call myself a managing partner but also mm. one of the creators founders and that sort of thing uh three of us mm -hmm. and then there's two uh um Consultants, we call them consultants, but okay. really they're part of the family uh, that, that that they help us. Uh, Sister Naomi out of DC, out of Silver Spring, and um, uh, William Patrick Barnett out of Charlotte, North Carolina. So you know, and so we, you know, we're all around the country, but you know, <laughs> we, we meet like you we said before. We meet every every Tuesday, and we get down to business, man. Right, you right. You know, we're getting ready for this week. We have an empowerment lifestyle weekend, which is in conjunction to the Charlotte event I was telling you about. So in Charlotte, if you're in Charlotte. Uh, July 21st, 22nd, um, see, 20, 21st, 22nd, and Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, we have a 5K race we're doing. Mm -hmm. We have a health fair. This is all in Charlotte. And we have a boat party, all white boat party. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's always fun. This is the eighth annual one. And then we uh, and then we cap it off with the Afro Cool Fest, which is the first year for the Afro Cool Fest, which is going to be on that Sunday. So if you want to check that out, you go to Power in One Clothing. Um, well, I'm sorry, go to Power in One on all social media sites or PIOclothing.com. You can find out more information about that. Got you. So um, down to the last two questions. Um, first one is, what would what is the, um, ne what's coming up next for you besides the tour? Mm -hmm. um, what's coming up next for you um, in your music or in your clothing line? Well, this is the so so what's we're always, always, always going and building out. So we're looking to um, for the clothing line. We're looking to, you know, uh, I think mid summer. I think we're almost in. Are we in the summer yet? Is this is um, summer. Not, right, yet. The end not of, quite yet. <laughs> oh, close to close to the end of summer. We have a new line coming out for Power and One Clothing. So look forward to that. Every season we put out a new a new something, you know, right. so because we want to keep things fresh. We love our, our, our line. This is one of our favorite shirts that I love my history. I love my culture. I love my people. I love me. This was designed or the words were put together by William Patrick Barnett. I designed it. And we um, this shirt is, is it's it's our favorite shirt. It's our favorite shirt. It's the most popular shirt. You can find us at PIOclothing.com. 
But um, we always love putting out new new designs right. and new, you know. I've also, you know, as I've grown with music, I've also grown into graphic arts. I've grown into photography. Yeah, I see. Bro. I've grown into, <laughs> oh, man, all these different things, man. Right. The jewelry, like, these are things, like, at 2010, 2011, these are things that I developed and decided I was going to go out and do and not be afraid to do. And I made sure that I trusted and believed in myself because at the end of the day no one told me no one's telling us to do any of this stuff no one tells an artist you got to do this do that you know maybe when you get your manager or something like that mm -hmm. but no one gives you that first step where you got to step into that room and say you know this is who i am you know um so that's what this was about uh and so just being deeper when it comes to what i'm doing next going deeper 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 into my creative mind you know what are the other things that i can create what am i looking to do um I have another album that I'm working on, which I'm really happy about, which um, which has has some delays. It's called Inspire. Mm -hmm. Now, this album is going to be totally produced by a producer out of Boston. His name is Phil DePayne. Now, he moved out here to L.A., like mm -hmm. like all of us, you know, to, right. to, to advance his music. But he's producing the whole entire album. I, you know, I usually produce some of the project. I have somebody that's produced. Mm -hmm. I love his beats so much, we decided to do a whole project together. So. Nice. You know, I don't have a necessary date for that. I definitely will have it by the end of the year because it's so important. The music is so important. Right. When I'm talking about and the way that it's coming out, this is, it's going to be fun, but you're going to, like, uh, be inspired to do great things. I call it my my uh, my inspirational gospel type album, you know. <laughs> um, it's I'm really kind of giving people the good news, you know, good news, good word about um, how to really activate you know what within themselves what they have and how to get there now we still keep it dope man i keep it hip-hop i'm an mc right. i still spit bars i still do all that stuff i produce you know what i'm saying i still keep kicking with the elements of hip-hop you know and i love them and i love hip-hop i i um i love the the expression of just going to different places when you travel you see different types of hip-hop right in the UK, man, you would not you, you connect with those cats. The, the grind, and they yeah. are man, the, exactly. The I didn't even know about it until I got out there. What, what that was, you know, and uh, went to the to the um, Afro Punk Festival out there too. That's why I want to go there so bad because it's like they, their grime hip hop is just like yeah, like, man. It's, it reminds me of a blend of today with what hip hop was in like the late nineties, early two thousands. Definitely, definitely, man. Um, like I, the the beat the beat um. The beat making is like very today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But their style is still yeah. like that of like yesteryears, where it's like, ah, oh, like I man, it's, <laughs> it's a pure love for music, man. And right. So, um, you know, shout out to my people out there. But yeah, that's that's the thing, man. Just um, those two things: the summer line immediately. The summer line is important, mm. and then the um. The uh, the album the in inspires the album is called Inspire, right. which connects with the, our clothing line. We um, we did a line last season called Inspire, right. so you can go online and check out the Inspire line. Um, and then the last thing is I do have a music video coming out for one of my songs. You know, and sometimes I work in different ways depending on what comes. You know, a, a videographer, also a buddy of mine, fellow MC Buck Bowen, uh, came to me with an idea, and we mm -hmm. we decided there's a song uh, on my last album. Um, let me get, grab that again. It's called uh, Liberate Through Economics. The, the, um, the song is called What It Is. Mm -hmm. What It Is. Mm -hmm. Just remember it. And uh, we put together a video <laughs> right now. So I'm looking to release that probably the next month or two, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and get some, some, uh, some, uh, some energy going with that. I would like to highlight, I do have a number of videos that are online. Okay. Um, my personal favorite and a personal favorite of a lot of people is a song called Bo Jackson. Mm -hmm. And um, you can check that one out on YouTube. Um, but just check out Bo Jackson and Ryan Lucas page. on my YouTube page. Gotcha. Um, you can just search it. You could probably Google it and find it too. But, you know, just make sure you add Ryan Lucas because Bo Jackson is a, a famous <laughs> name. Um, but, um, but, yeah, so that's what the immediate, that's what I'm about. You know? One of my last questions is if you had anything to tell your audience right now, what would it be? Well, it's it's almost everything that I've kind of been reiterating um, throughout this whole interview mm -hmm. is that um, no one's coming to uh, advance what you want to do. Mm -hmm. No one's coming to now. People may on, on may come around and, and encourage you, but no one's going to believe in you if you don't believe in yourself. You know, so believe in yourself. Whatever you want to do, you just do it. Now, this is a marathon, though. This isn't a this isn't a a sprint. You know, <laughs> it's a marathon. I've been, like I said, I've been doing this for 10 years. And re technically, music-wise, I've probably been, ma been making music for 20 years, if I want to be honest about right. all the things. When I say 10 years, that, that means That's this is a business. Actively, yeah. yeah, this is a business. And I'm telling everybody, I'm a hip-hop artist. I got this tattoo because I wanted to remind myself this is what I do. Right. You know, this is uh, my declaration of, of uh, independence, you know. <laughs> so 
you have to do it. it and and you, sometimes you have to ignore your feelings. You have to ignore how you feel and just say, well, right. listen, this is my goal. This is what I want done. And some people have specific goals mm -hmm. that they, you know, I want to win a Grammy and that stuff. And that's great to, to have these specific goals. I'm living. This is who I am. This is, you know, I'm just becoming a higher form of myself. You right, know, when right. you become your authentic self, you know, all these different things will come, you know, right. or may, may or may not come. But you will love who you are. Love who you are and just go for yours, you know. It's easier said than done, I'm not gonna front. It's easier right. said, because a lot of people say, yeah, you know, go ahead. And because I, if I <laughs> if I got a dollar for every person that encourages me, encourage me, you know what I'm saying? But they don't give me dollars, they give me compliments, right? So, <laughs> but, but sometimes that encouragement actually kind of helps you, because there have been times I wanted to quit, you know, because, right. you know, financially, any artist will tell you, financially, this is not the money maker, you know, this right. is, this is really about your love and your passion. Mm -hmm. You know, the, I, I believe money comes the way it comes, you know. Right. If you got to get that, like, that 9 to 5, you got to get that 9 to 5, but, you know, still do your 5 to 9, you know. Right. You know, I have a line in one of my songs that says, um, 5 to 9 um, gave me something I can believe in. This isn't going to rhyme, but because it goes to another line. But 5 to 9 gave me something I can believe in. 9 to 5 kept the food on the table, right. you know. So, basically, you know, remember that, that you can do it if you want to do it but you have to want to do it right that's it man that's a deep that's, that's a deep message that's it man. yeah let me just say this real quick pio clothing.com um for the clothing we design our own clothing um young black brothers you know what i'm saying from around the country doing our thing um pio clothing.com and you can follow us at power in one on all social media sites i appreciate you coming by brother and thank you, thank you, my brother. Thank no you problem. to the Raw Academics family. And you know what I'm saying? I have a, it's been a beautiful experience, man. Thank you, I wish thank you guys, you know, you know, much success with everything that you got going on. And anything that we can do to help you to grow, we're going to help, man. Word. Thank you so much. And I thank everybody for tuning in. This is only the first part of the show. We have another guest coming on in just a few moments, parenthesis Gardner. And just hold tight for a few minutes while we make that transition, all right? Raw Academics, stay tuned.
to Raw Academics. So I have one more guest for t- for this evening, and I had to take a little break because, like I said, I'm doing all this by myself today. But um, right now, I'm going to have one of my favorite playwrights come in, my favorite L.A. playwright so far because I've only been to a few of your plays. But um, I would like to introduce you all to Parenthesis E. Gartner. All right, all right. Don't she, get me started. She made me. She, oh, yeah. she. <laughs> Listen, falling and all that extra stuff going on. <laughs> this is how he got me. Hey. And, what's uh, going on? What's going on, girl? <laughs> but I'm glad. I'm so glad. After two months of trying to get you on the show, we finally got you here. Hey, that was your fault. That was mine. <laughs> <She, laughs> Gotta make that dough. She had, she had, no, no, it wasn't, it wasn't all the dough. It, I remember um, one time it was your birthday because you, yeah, you so went home to celebrate. You was, you was a March, you, the, you a March baby just Absolutely. like me. Absolutely. <laughs> Pisces in the house. Well, I don't, unfortunately, I'm an Aries, you know. <laughs> See, well. You well, not what? unfortunately, listen, but. <laughs> listen, you got to get with the Pisces. Uh, yeah, I'm. You know what? I, I happen. But you're my March baby, so I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I have. I happen to have a fetish for Pisces. I'm not. Okay. I'm not. Gonna, I'm not gonna even lie. That like, creative side of Pisces. Huh? Yeah, yeah, the the creative side of Pisces. Like, yeah, I love. I love the creative side. <laughs> That's what we do. But um, we will a man. Now, <laughs> out of all the Pisces, I need to know from you, how would you describe parenthesis Gardner? I don't know. I think I'm the up Pisces, you know. <laughs> I'm one of those because, you know, we got the down and we got the up Pisces. I'm the up Pisces. I'm always happy, always smiling, mm-hmm. always seeing through my uh, through my trials. Mm-hmm. But just a smile. Um, nurturing, fun-loving, mm-hmm. free-spirited, adventurous, and non-judgmental. Cool. This so, is how I live. So, how, what, um, <clears throat> excuse me, like, like, personal, like, f- aside from the astrology side, what would you um say about yourself like how would you describe yourself like or what do you what do you think people <laughs> <laughs> am i making you nervous <laughs> how do you uh, how do other people view you or you think they view you most people it's it's so funny i have so many children over here and i, I, I don't have any biologically mm-hmm. but i have so many children and half the children's probably older than i am but um mostly a nurturer i'm i'm a nurturer i will i'll will bring you in i will um it, you know, give you a little bit of advice. If I've had that life experience, mm-hmm. uh, I, I don't mind sharing whatever gifts that I have. I don't mind sharing them with others if they want knowledge. Mm-hmm. I'm there. I'm like the big sister, you know. Just uh, and I love basketball and bourbon. I'm one of those chicks. Nice. You know, I can sit down and ha- and have a good conversation with you. And, mm-hmm. and sometimes I want to just be out, out on the basketball court shooting shooting goals, like I'm Steph Curry or somebody like that. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, just a. Just a simple chick. So Just a simple chick with a big dream. You are a <laughs> director, <laughs> director, producer, playwright, and script writer. I am a screen and playwright, yes. Mm-hmm. I am a singer, song, songstress, oh, songwriter. Go ahead, I'm a poetess, and I, co- I like to consider a director, of course, mm-hmm. and producer, and I like to consider myself a creative humanitarian. Cool, cool. So. And, like, what? how has that or describe the journey um what has that like I, I know that you've lived through like three different cities that i know of <laughs> <laughs> but um let me know how, how's the um how has that taken you on a journey journey like your create creativity how like what kind of journey has that brought you put you on well you know it's more than just the cities mm. it, just being a, a part of a creative nation is um mm is a journey itself right you know true. um i will say you know east coast and i love my east coast i think that the east coast are more um their the theater is is is, is larger it's a big, thing. It's a yeah. big theater out in mm-hmm. the east coast um mm-hmm. and um a lot of it is catered to mm-hmm. stage actors over over here in la we're we're finding our way the theater is, fi- is finding its way so it's mm-hmm. mostly catered to film and, and TV actresses, mm, right. but I find out that um, most most of them are, uh, they still have the same passion, you know, they still want, they want that dream, right? you right. know, and that's what makes them, brings out the commonality in them, mm. so, but the, the work ethic is definitely different, it's definitely different, as far as my journey, I just, the journey just, it, it um, made some, so much of a difference in my life from a younger, 
mm-hmm. age. It wasn't just like now. I just popped up and said, hey, <laughs> you know, I'm going to be a writer. I want to do this. <laughs> you know, um, my when I was in eighth grade, my, my music teacher, Miss Battles, and I, I really wish I could find her, and I don't even know if she's still living. Hmm. Um, I went to, of course, you know, from the hood. Went to the little inner school. I'm an inner, inner city chick. Well, on um, what school? Because you, um, you told me that you grew up in Newark, New Jersey, right? Mm-hmm. So, what school? Cause I'm, well, I'm my middle, my my middle school was Quitman, Quitman Street. Quitman Street. Okay, I, kn- I know where that is. Quitman like, Street, right like off of Central uh, Central Ward. Yes, right yeah. by Central Ward, um, right off of Quitman Ave, Quitman right. Ave, and West Kinney. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I went there and my and um, you know and. She took she took a hold of me because she was just like you're not gonna be one of these other people, and I was sitting in a music class and mm. I was just humming to myself and she was like, well, this little girl she got a little <laughs> voice, you know, she dressed like a little tomboy, you know, hat turned to the back and big pants on, but she got a little something too. It was a sp- it was something that connected me to her, mm. and she told me she says I'm not gonna let you go down this 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 the little path that people can go down. She mm. said I'm gonna help you out, and I'm like. Okay, you know, whatever, you know, but she, um, before I went to pr- the School of the Performing Arts, she mm. helped me with my monologue, she helped me with my music, mm. and she was just like, look, I'm going to be there, and she was there at the auditions, and so she kind of got me started. Mm. Poetry was something that I did just to, as an escape goat when I was just young, I just started writing, and I never right. took it serious until Miss Battles kind of was just like, well, you got something here. Miss hmm, Battles, that sounds her. like a familiar name. I probably know her. Mm-hmm. Like, Linda uh, Battles, Linda Battles. Linda I Battles. never forget her, never. She started me. And like, okay, so take me through your journey because you you lived in Newark, um, then you moved to Philadelphia. You li- no, <laughs> no. no <our laughs> we ain't got to go through all our journeys, but <laughs> I, I I lived in Florida. Oh, you lived in Florida. I, I migrated to um, Newark, New Jersey. Right. Lived in New York, then mm. ended up in Philly, and now I'm over here. Okay. Cool. <laughs> no problem. And um, like. Okay, so let's let's bring it up to like where you are working here in LA. Mm-hmm. Um, so earlier this year, you know, you 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 were like really super busy from yeah. like um, from what I was um, just like this is when I'm first hearing about you. Yeah, like but, you, you, know, you were busy wor- is good. <laughs> <laughs> we want to stay busy. <laughs> so you're working on two plays at the same time that were going to be released February and then March, like one ra- one after the other. How was the? I was ske- actually working on four, but I was <laughs> I was directing two. <laughs> I was directing two. I was mm-hmm. in one, and I was producing my own. So all at the same time, and so they just came out like back to back, and it wasn't right. scheduled that way. But I don't give up. I don't turn down work, especially when they have substance in it. Mm-hmm. So someone says, "Hey, I want you to direct my piece," and, and they trust that I can direct it, to bring their vision to life. Hey, let's go for it. That is so. so that is so cool. Like, but it's it's not a job. It does. It's not busy to mm-hmm. me mm-hmm. because it's our passion. Right. You know, it's that purpose we're here. Right. And so it, it, it was just like okay, it was it was just like a normal every day for me. It wasn't like a. You so know, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. <laughs> Explain <laughs> this purpose, though, because it's like, I mean, all right, you're, you're working on four, four different plays. And, like, okay, so you have, um, I'm pretty sure, practice at least three, three nights a week for one. And then, like three nights a week for the other one, or well, I mean, it depends. It depends on the the um, the level of actresses and mm-hmm. actors that I have in the piece. Okay. Now, if there are stronger actors and actresses that are in the piece, mm-hmm. you may get two days, or you may get one day with, uh, and it'll just be a long eight hour day. Mm-hmm. And if you're if you're still new to it, and, and if the piece is very um, detailed and intricate, mm-hmm. you may get three days, right. three days a week. So I kind of map them out. And then as we get closer to the pieces, mm-hmm. uh, closer to the time for it to premiere, then we, we add more days as needed. Cool. So, wow. Yeah. So like w- which one, um, so you were working, like there was two that you, um, that I knew of, um, Blended Blood. And there was another one, um, I forgot the name of it. Um, Misleading Lady One, misleading, misleading Lady, lady One and Two. I uh, directed, and that was by a playwright, a, bur- a brilliant playwright, mm-hmm. Sharon Judy, mm-hmm. uh, from Ten Talents Productions. Um, she's what a, made you pick up her play? Oh my God, she has so much substance. Really? She um, she came into she came into uh, one of my productions mm-hmm. as my um, uh, 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 PA, mm-hmm. my production assistant at mm-hmm. first, and she watched me go through the process of 
you know, of doing the auditions and, 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 and doing the directing and pulling out the piece from start to beginning. She was there. Mm. And she told me, she came to me, she says, um, P, I have a piece mm. that I want to put out there. I've done it before. And she was doing it in, in churches. Right. And she said, I want to actually do it in a theater. Take a look at it mm. and tell me what you think. And when I read it, it was so much substance in it. Mm. And, I, you know, I sent it back to her. I said, okay, if you ask me to trust it, because I'm a dramaturg too, too. <laughs> so you got to trust me because I will right. cut it up in a minute. Like, hey, no, try this again. Um, and I allow people, if they're direct minds, to do the same thing if I trust them. Mm. And then I gave her some, you know, some little, little adjustments she made, and she came back with it, and it was a brilliant piece, and it was heartwarming. And I had to, I had to see her vision come to life. Mm. I had to. And it was, it, was, it was beautiful for her. It was beautiful for me. It was beautiful for the actors. It was it was an experience. That was one of the best experiences. It's like it's mm -hmm. funny. It's funny that you say that because like as like just listening to you is mm -hmm. like you know I'm feeling like wow it sounds like you had like a deep experience just Absolutely. putting this um together. Um, who were who were um, the actors that you had in um, your first play? In my first play or in that play? In, in that play, I'm sorry. In that particular play, um, the the lead actress was Nerlene Jean, and mm. she's a very powerful actress. Mm. The lead male was Eric Fennell, and another powerful brother mm. um, actor. Um, uh, then we had uh, Morwan Granville, who mm. who was another uh, another powerful actor. Mm. Uh, we Elijah Jamal. These these actors and, and Elijah Jamal is actually a singer first, right. but he took on that role and he and it called for a singer and and he took on that role and he made it his own. Right. So um, there was a lot of a lot of good people that we had around us. We had Carl Judy, who was the writer's husband who's not necessarily an actor, mm. but we brought it out in him because he naturally, sometimes people naturally have a gift. You don't have to go to school for it. Right. You know, sometimes, of course you want to keep it creative and you want to keep it. Um, keep it home. Yeah, yes. keep it skilled. Yeah, mm. keep, your, keep it skilled because I'm still in classes and I will continue to go to classes until I die because the more you learn, the more you grow, you know. Right. And once you stop learning, you stop growing. That's how I believe. Mm. And it doesn't matter what level you're at. Um, but they brought this, uh, oh my God, um, Ricky Westmoreland. She played first lady, and she was, and she's a film actor first, mm -hmm. and so this was her first stage play. Wow, and her really? Transition, her, yes, her transition from film, it was beautiful to watch. Really? From film to stage. Because yes. I know a lot of people say it's like hard for them to transition from film to stage because mm -hmm. it's like, film is like, you know, there's no- Cut, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> cut, let's do it over, cut, and on stage, if it happens, boom. It ain't no start right. over, you just gotta and keep going. Exactly. To get a line, you better, you better make one up. <laughs> you, know? you can't just, you know, you can't just say cut, start, let's start over. But for you to stage. say, um, and then you told me how hard you are on your um Yeah, actors. I'm a little edgy, I'm a little edgy, right. and, you know, and, and it's so funny because a lot of the times when I work with the actors, they mock me. <laughs> like, I will walk in the room and they'd be like, do it again! <laughs> I don't believe that, say it again! <laughs> and I walked in and they was picking at me one day, I just thought it was so beautiful, I thought it was so funny. And, uh, and it's so funny because even on my uh, social media, they'll put a little line that right. I say, nope, I don't believe it. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> you know, uh, but then at the end of it, it's, they know that I would never embarrass them. Mm -hmm. But they know that if I see something in them, a potential in them, that I can pull out more. Because some of them come with it, it advanced, you know, skills. Mm -hmm. But if I see that one thing that they're trying to hold back, I'm, I'm digging in there. Well, see, I was, was going to save this question for later, but <laughs> <laughs> but I have to ask it now because it's like, um, now, what, all right, so what makes you, when you bring on these actors and mm -hmm. actresses onto a play, what are you looking for specifically um, since you're so, um, you know, edgy with, with them? It's, uh, well, first of all, it depends on what the character calls for. Mm -hmm. But I have pet peeves, and again, my actors, whoever work with me will tell you this. Mm -hmm. I don't look for actors. Mm. I don't want you to act. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't like that whole acting thing. I want you to just be. Right. Be that character. You know, bring that. Right. Live in that person's place. If, the, if, if you're a drug addict, be that. Right. Don't come on there and act like you're a drug addict mm -hmm. because then the audience is not going to believe it because you're just acting. Mm -hmm. And that's one of my pet peeves. Do not act. Just be. Mm -hmm. Just, just I, I want to see realism. I want the audience to feel, feel connected with you. Right. If I see you acting, I'd be like, mm-mm, do it again. I don't believe it. And I know it, it sounds funny because we're acting, mm -hmm. but to not act and to just be brings out a better uh, perspective of who. And, and most audience will relate to it more. Right. To that person. They're like, okay, that was me. <laughs> that, oh, that could be me. Right. You know? It right. makes it more real. Right. I love realism. I don't like fake crying or find another emotion. 
you know, if it's if the scene and I don't follow all the directions that's in the, in the, the script. script. The script says cry and you know, <laughs> and you fake, don't fake cry. <laughs> don't do it because I'm gonna stop you. I'm a, right. No, mm -mm. find an emotion that fits. If right. you can't, if you can't muster it, because some people can't cry on cue, or some people, you know, they can't. They don't have that emotion in them. Or maybe they've not experienced enough, or some of them are trained differently. Right. You know, but like I said, you, if you can't find that emotion that it says on there, find the emotion that will fit the scene itself. Right. Because I don't think crying is acting all the time. Yes, there's some emotional parts where it calls for it. But just because you're crying doesn't mean that you're acting. Just because you're yelling, I don't think yelling is acting, you know, because <laughs> a lot of people do that. Right. You know, it's just because you're yelling don't mean you're getting your point across. Right. Because you could, you could, you could, less is more. Less mm. is more. Gotcha. Especially when it comes to you trying to be, you try to do all this extra head, you know, <laughs> cut it out, <laughs> cut it out, <laughs> just be you, you know what I'm saying? Because right. sometimes like you can, you could, I, you could sit in a room and I think that the toughest acting, and I told one of my, I told Monica this, I watched her, Monica Davis, who was also um, mm. the other lead in Blended Blood, mm. very uh, strong actor. And she was in one of my first plays that I did in LA and she sat there. The first scene, she just sat there. She didn't say nothing. She just looked, and she had her emotion. And everybody knew that she was going through pain from just the look on her face, mm -hmm. the internal story on her face. She didn't have to say a word. Right. And, and by the time she spoke, the audience was already pulled in because they wanted to know exactly why she was hurting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? Right. And less, sometimes less is more. Slow motion. No music. No words. Mm -hmm. Just do it. Do what you would do if you're in that situation. It's, it's so different. People want to run all across the night. No. You make it sound so powerful. <laughs> it is powerful to me. It's powerful to me. It's like, it's my adrenaline rush. Right. You know, that, that cre the whole creative, that whole, the, the, the and, and it's so funny because I started off as a writer first before mm. I started directing. Right. And then I, I took acting. It was right. like acting turned into something that I, um, I passionately loved. Mm. Um, and then I started seeing other actors. I got inspired by other actors and I started seeing these stories. I'm like, oh, I can do that. What if they did this? Right. What if, the, and then all these ideas start coming to my head. So I'm like, let me get more into the directing. I was already writing and right. I know what I saw in my head. And I just had to see if I can take other people's stories. It's easy for you to take your own story. Own story yeah. Because you already know. Uh, you write the story based on the most writers write from experience. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. we can take our own story and create it. But to take someone else's story and rip it apart, see what the underline is. What, 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 what's the object, uh, objective? What are they really trying to get you to believe? Right, right. You know, what are they trying to say? Right. And to rip that apart and come up with a writer's vision or somewhere close to a writer's vision is, mm. is just a journey all in itself. That is some deep ish. It's, 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 it's a journey all in itself. I love it. You know, people always ask me because, you know, they say, you know, I do a lot. Can I act? Yeah, I'll get on it. I'll get on it. And I'll act if I need to. You know, I will never tell my actors to do anything that I wouldn't do. Right. Um, and they'll tell you that. I'm like, I'll, if they say, oh, well, you do it. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna show me how you want it. Okay. I'll show you, but I want you to give your own perspective of it. I'll show you what I saw in my head, and you give me that. Make choices. Um, but speaking of which, when you wrote um, "Blended Blood," mm -hmm. like what <laughs> made you? What made you like? What, what brought out the process to make it so edgy and like? Um, because uh, I don't know if you want me to reveal the story or if I have permission to reveal. reveal well, it's, it's been done. Okay. <laughs> so, so it's all okay. Right, all right, cool. So, like, when it comes down to the, like, you know, the husband being in a relationship with the older sister and then ending up marrying the younger sister, like, years later, mm -hmm. like, what gave you that thought process? Like, or, like, do you do, like, like did you see situations like that before? or is Absolutely. Okay. I've experienced situations like that or been involved in situations like that where mm -hmm. uh, the sister ended up. Not that the whole long distance thing, because that was just something that I added right, in where they right. didn't see each other for years, and so they didn't know. Right. But the whole one sister ended up with this man, and, and, and he was with that one. It's like civil, sibling rivalry. Right. I've seen that growing up. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of, like I said, a lot of us, we write on stuff we've seen or stuff that we've been emotionally attached to. Mm -hmm. And, um, and the, even with the drug addict, you know, we saw that. 
right. with, the, with the family, with the mom. Right, right. You know, mm-hmm. and with the foster home. Mm-hmm. It's all something that I've experienced or I've been emotionally attached to. So right. it's easy for me to just come up with, say, oh, okay, well, we're going to make them sisters. <laughs> we're going to make them sisters, and then we're going to throw in some stuff. We're going to throw in some twists and turns mm-hmm. and see what the outcome will bring. Mm. So and that's what I came up with, with the outcome, you know. Right. So I mean, I don't. I, I always told myself that when I was go- when I do productions, right. when I sit down and write, I'm not gonna write. The first thing is that I'm not gonna write until God gives it to me. And the second thing is I don't write to live. I live to write. Right. You know, I don't write to make money. I, it's my passion. It's my purpose. Right. So I live to write. Mm-hmm. And when stuff starts pouring down into me, I told myself that I would take things that happen in real life mm-hmm. and create the story around them, touch all of these these um, these situations and these crises and circumstances that we faced with. Mm-hmm. Who hasn't seen a drug? Who ever had d- dealt with a drug dealer mom who probably covered up, you know, covered it up? Well, she had a job, <laughs> right? Who, who, ha- who never Worked dealt with downtown PTSD? and everything? Yeah, that yeah, that's true. Who who haven't suffered with cancer? Right, right, right. Who haven't cheated on a spouse or mm. you know attempted to? Right. There was some desire there, had a forbidden passion. Right. Maybe a baby got lo- lost along the way. Who right. knows? But these are things that happen in real life, and mm. to and, and and theater I think is an escapism for a lot of people mm. because we can fantasize how we want it to end. Right. We can fantasize what you know what we want to be or how if we want to be that character we can right. we can place ourselves. It takes us away from the normal everyday thing if we can relate to something else on that stage even if it's for just two hours right right so i try to create a fantasy or uh, a real a realist a realistic fantasy for people when i write my my works now just a question why did the younger sister have to die then um who said she died you know what that's true because she just passed out that's you right. know? <laughs> like, it's up to your that, that's, and that's something that's left to the audience imagination who knows there may be a blended blood too mm, mm, you know right but no one knows that she actually died right you know and i'm just assuming that she died she died but you left it up to the imagination it's imagination of it because i don't want to dumb down my audience i want the audience that you, you don't want to get okay a lot of things, another pet peeve that I, I, that I have about mm. um, writers is that we always want to end with a happy story, a happy ending. <laughs> we know that life, we know how life is. Mm. Life ain't always a happy ending. Right, not right. that you don't get it mm. sometimes, but life is not always a happy ending. Right. You know, so let's make it real. Let's make it real. Maybe she didn't make it. Maybe right. the mom did kill herself. Who knows? Right. Who knows? But it needs to be real to me. And it needs to be real to the people who've seen it. Some of those people that were out in the audience was probably a character that I based it around. Mm. Who knows? And so I try to keep the stories as real as possible mm. to the person or the inspiration and the muse that I use. So what is the <laughs> <laughs> so what is um your next plan like um as far as like you know plays or. Um, script writing is concerned like wh- well I mean I have scripts and plays up under my belt um, it's what I do right. it's the thing that gets you up in the middle of the night you know I'm always on Facebook sleep is overrated it's <laughs> 4 o'clock in the morning I go to sleep and I'm like no sleep is overrated I'm writing you know it, it, once you get it in your head it, you, you don't stop and me I, I won't say okay I'm gonna remember it in the morning no mm. I'm gonna get my ass up right there oops girl I don't know if I can say ass but <laughs> yes, I'm gonna get my butt up right you know right <laughs> then and there and I'm right. gonna do I'm gonna get it all out because I want it to be as fresh as possible mm. um, as far as what I have coming up I, I'm auditioning for two plays um, one that I'll be directing uh, from one of our East Coast people from Philly Sharon Monet she's an uh, uh, artist award-winning playwright uh, author um, and she has her own publishing company and it's called get out of your own way mm. and she's also a motivational coach I'll be auditioning for that July the 1st um, I have one coming up called foul play and foul play is a, a fantasy adventure and mm. I'll be auditioning for that one on June the 17th day after Father's Day okay then I have Sharon Judy's misleading lady three because this is her chronicle, mm. Miss Leading Lady Three coming up, and we're deciding on what day to do um, auditions for that. To, adu- to do auditions for that. Mm-hmm. And aside from the stage plays, mm. I will be a spotlight artist actually at, um, and mm. I'll be doing poet poetry. Mm. Then I'll be doing poetry and music um, in Avalon on July the twenty first. I'm also touring in a play. Yes, I still act. I'm touring in a play, and we'll be Lord. down in <laughs> South Carolina. <laughs> you know, from another another. Um, great uh, award-winning uh, playwright, 
Pichanda Du Bois. Mm. So I'm in her piece. I'm one of the characters in her piece too, and they're traveling. They're traveling the East Coast, and and I have the two films that one is being edited. Mm. You know, so we're gonna do a premiere for that one. I hope you guys will come out and see it. Um, it's called Deceitful Decisions. Um, it's a it's a great great piece. So um, you're really busy throughout this whole summer. Like you have. I I am in love with my purpose. Gotcha. So I don't call it busy. Busy. I call it being in love with your purpose. It's what you're here for. Right. And and I love it. Right. You know, busy is when I'm at work and I can't get off the phone. <laughs> see, I still got a nine to five until we, you know, right. until I can make that and I can't get off the phone to write what I want to write or make a, a a call for for my own projects. Right. And I, eventually, that's where I want to get the right. nonprofit, you know, creative and performing arts nonprofit organization that that I have. Peace or Positive Sisters on the Rise. Mm. Um. I'm trying to get to the level where I can do that full time. And right. then that becomes my purpose and not my job or my career. So if you had anything to tell your audience um, right now, what would your what would your message be to your audience? Well, most of my audi audience would probably be creative artists. Mm -hmm. So um, or, you know, uh, yeah, I would say. It's OK to be afraid. And I think I posted this maybe a couple of days ago. It's OK to be afraid mm -hmm. and it's also okay not to be afraid mm -hmm. as long as you take the risk mm -hmm. because if you don't take the risk it's like oh my god you, you'll never know what the outcome will be mm -hmm. you will never know what you can see and again and, and I think you, the, the first um, uh, interviewer that you had on Ryan Luke he um, he, sa he said it best he's, he's like um, he said uh, and I'm probably paraphrasing it but the only person that's going to believe in you the way you believe in you is you. Right. Don't let nobody else tell you what you can't do. Mm -hmm. There was this guy on a bus. I have to tell this really quick. There was this guy on a bus, and I was having, I was on a bus one day. Come, I don't know if I was, I was coming home from work, school, whatever. Um, and I was having one of those little moody moments. Mm -hmm. And he says, hey, sister, how you doing? Mm -hmm. I said, oh, I'm hanging in here. He says, let me tell you something. He said, don't hang in there. Because if you hang in there, that means you can fall. Mm. He says, stand in that, there and you stand tall. That's some deep ish. <laughs> stand, steadfast in what it is that you believe in. Right. So I, I would I encourage my audience, my artists, or any, any, anybody, because everybody has different gifts. Mm -hmm. Stay steadfast in what you believe in. Right. Don't let nobody tell you what you can't do. Right. And if they do, you prove them wrong. But don't prove them wrong for them. Prove them wrong for you. Right. You know, just do it. We over we overanalyze a lot of stuff, and we we're, we're so afraid that we could succeed that a lot of the times we'll put um, uh, fear in a way of what we really want. Get rid of the fear. Mm. Get rid of the fear. Freedom is to exist, and that's how you gotta live your life. You just gotta take risks. Right. The worst risk that you can ever take is not taking a risk at all. Right. Come on. And it's just that simple. That's it's hitting that home simple. for me. Like. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you got to live, especially right. in this business, especially if you got to have tough, get, tough skin and you got to believe in yourself. Everything else will fall into place. Mm. Keep God first and believe in yourself or whoever you believe in. Uh, Mine is God. So whoever it is that you believe in, whoever your spiritual leader is, right. keep that person first right. and believe in yourself more than anybody else will. That's some powerful stuff it'll right there. You, it'll get you a long way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely thank you for coming on. Absolutely. And it's it's like you have, you're delivering a great message to end the show off with. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> and I and, uh, and, and I'm I really, silly sometimes. But I really love your 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 drive and your Absolutely. like your your passion. Like I'm feeling all your energy right now, and that's good. Good. <laughs> good. Feel my energy. Feel all of that. And I'm just hoping that everybody <laughs> in the audience felt it as well. Feel my energy. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you all for tuning in to Raw Academics tonight, and enjoy the rest of your day. And I want to thank again. My guest, parenthesis Gardner, not parentheses, <laughs> but parenthesis E. e Gardner. Gardner. That's right. Thank and, you for having me. And my homie Ryan Luke for coming on tonight. And I hope that you all enjoy your Friday afternoon or your Friday. Yeah. Have a good one. Have Thank you for one. tuning in to Raw, <laughs> Raw Academics. <laughs> Maybe calling me.